Cody, obviously you, you didn't get to compete uh, in 2022. Um, but I was just curious, you know, sometimes we hear that, you know, those times away can actually be a, a good thing because you're not stuck in a training camp or what have you. So last year not getting to compete, good thing or bad thing? You know, sometimes you can look at it in a negative, but there's a lot of things that I corrected and had to change um, in my life and career. Um, you know, first and foremost, moved out here to Las Vegas. Uh, so I've been here for a year, and it was a huge adjustment period when I first moved out here. You know, um, coaches and, and, and teammates and, and finding that, um, you know, for me, I do well with structure and routine. So I was out of that for a bit. So I, I truly believe that everything happens for a reason. There's a reason why those fights didn't prosper. And just very excited for the camp that I had and to be here for fight week, to be speaking in front of you guys. And, and just to be honest with you, I'm uh, very excited to go make weights Friday and, and showcase my skills on Saturday. Nice. As you see, you come back on a huge card, T-Mobile Arena, right, ESPN. I mean, at this point in your career, like, does that, I mean, the competition is what matters, getting in there, right? But does that extra stuff, like, add to it at this point in your career? There was a time in my career that I, I could care less about any of that, you know. And, you know, those feelings are back, you know, so it's, it's, it's excitement. And I thought I dealt a, dealt a lot with um, that being anxiety, the feeling of excitement. But it's just excitement, you know. I, I've learned to cope with those feelings of, you know, thinking it's anxiety. It's actually excitement. So I'm just excited, you know. Go back to, you know, the beginning of it all. You know, it's 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 been an amazing journey. You know, I was able to debut on John Jones' card against DC, and you know, look at the trajectory of our careers where it's at. You know, became a world champion. Um, he's here now, going to, you know, get another notch in his belt at heavyweight. So it's great, man. It's just uh, I'm thankful to be here. I'm thankful to the camp that I had, the teammates, the coaches. Uh, it's been a long 16 months, um, but a lot of good has came from the change. You know, I miss my guys at Team Alpha Male. Those are my brothers. It was super hard to leave family like that. But you know, I have a son, and uh, he comes first. So, and I'll always be. Nice. Uh, dealing with a late replacement opponent, I guess, you know, given how long you've been away, like, did it matter to you at all? Did you care? Did you discuss it? Or were you just like, whatever? You know, I, I realized that the UFC released that he was stepping in on short notice. This dude's, we took the fight five weeks ago, so it's not a short, a short notice fight for me is a couple of days, two weeks top. So if you can't get ready for a fight and you're in the UFC roster in five weeks, you don't need to be on the roster. So, um, you know, I'm excited for this opponent because I was training for a southpaw and, uh, I didn't think they'd find me a southpaw opponent. That's why I chose Tevin, or Trevin, sorry. Um, I, you know, was training for a southpaw the whole time, so not switch it up. I had a few other names in the hats. A couple guys called me out, you know, respect to them, you know, trying to get their, uh, their jump to it. Uh, I'm just focused and motivated on what I have to do. And like I said, I had a great, great training camp. I uh, brought in Dewey Cooper. Um, phenomenal, phenomenal coach, just mentor, his energy is, is second to none, and uh, Chase Pammy, uh, world-class wrestler, wrestler at the highest level on the, on the U.S. team all over the world, and we've just been grinding, you know. I might have been out for, you know, 16 months, but really the last eight months has been nonstop, you know, just work and training and, and developing the skills with the new coaches and teammates, and, you know, I worked a lot with uh, Micah, he's the therapist at the UFC PI. And, uh, you know, it's been great. You know, I think that speaking about, you know, you know, going and having a therapist or a sports therapist, you know, like I've always come to fight mentally, physically, you know, I mean, physically always, you know, uh, but working on the mental side, you know, and just getting back to it. So I'm just excited, man. I just have these feelings. It's been so long that I've been in this position where I'd speak in front of you and it'd be kind of just going through the motions, but you know, I'm honestly sitting here saying this is the best I felt in years. Um, my life is is great. I'm excited. I'm just go, excited to go out there and showcase the skills on Saturday. And you know, I'm a former world champion, so I have that going on, and uh, I'm looking to rebound from the skid that I've been on. I understand that you know there's ups and downs in life, but just keeping the balance, and that's what I've been doing over the last you know year or over. You know, just. You know, I just need some momentum, you know, take momentum in this life, in this career. You saw what momentum did in 2016, went from unranked to world champion. And uh, that's all it takes is one fight at a time. And, you know, it's a snowball effect. And I'll make it back to the top. Nice. Last thing for me, 
I guess given that, right, like it sounds like you're in a really good place mentally and physically and like you've been a world champion before. I mean, I know every fighter wants to win every fight, but like is there any added importance on the result of this fight or is it more about just going in there and, you know, knowing that you were at 100% and knowing that you did your best? Yeah, that's, you said it correctly. It's what happens on Saturday night, it's, it's already, you know, it's out there. You know, it's already going to happen. The work's done. It's what is going to happen is going to happen. I truly believe I'm very confident that wherever this play takes place, um, you know, inside that 15 minutes, I'll get the job done. But I know, you know, in the preparation leading up to this fight, I did everything that I needed to do and then some. You know, I worked on things I've never worked on in my entire life. And uh, I just feel good as a human, as an athlete, as a fighter to go and showcase, you know, heart, courage, determination and uh, the persistence of just going out there and, and getting this win. Cody, over here. Uh, you obviously said like you weren't a lot able to compete last year, but you did have fights booked. Uh, it was a lot of like start and stop. And in the past, we've heard fighters that after a while, it just feels like one long fight camp and they can just get burnt out after a while. Did you feel any of that with all the starting and stopping of these fight camps? You know, that's a great question. Um, I feel like a lot of fighters you know, it would, it would break in this, having to go through. I went through three fight camps that didn't happen, you know, and a lot of them were literally two weeks before the fight, so really on the, really on the turndown of the, the camp. So I put all the hard work in, and it didn't come to wishing. You didn't get paid. You didn't, you know, end up having some procedures. I had no surgery, um, you know, so, but for me it was the, the, you know, even in those dark times, like that, I can't wait to get back in there. I know that's how my love and passion is, through the roof of the sport, you know, and uh, so many times in the past, I've not had that. You've been numb walking to the to the arena. You have 20,000 fans going crazy to fight, and you just have no feeling of numbness. But you know, now I have the the feeling of excitement, and uh, just I'm just excited to be in there, get in there and fight. I've worked so hard. I've I've honed my skills, you know, mentally and physically. So I'm just excited to go in there. You know, three fight camps. I'm finally get to go in there and, and showcase all the hard work my me and my coaches and everyone that's helped me, you know, through the transition period of my life has done. And the last time we saw you compete was obviously a flyweight. Uh, and I know you, even leading up to that, you said, you know, I feel good, like the weight cut is easy and stuff. But now, more than a year later, how difficult was that weight cut? Let me be honest with you with that fight. I felt good in the sense of the weight cut went good. You know what I mean? But outside of that, my life was in shambles. You know what I mean? I. Uh, wasn't good. I wasn't in a good place. I wasn't happy. You know, I went through the motions. You know, camp was good. I had a bunch of injuries going into the fight. These all sound like excuses, but and I sit there and sat there and said, oh, I feel great. I feel great. When I tell you this, I feel great. I feel awesome. I had a great camp. I, I truly did this fight, and I'm just excited to go out there and, and, and perform. You know, that's I'm, I'm a performer. I'm an entertainer. I'm a performer, and I'm just excited to be back to this uh, position. Um, this energy, um, this love, I guess you can call it passion for this sport. I mean, it's not fun. I don't, I don't think fighting is fun at all, but I enjoy it. You know, I think I, I really enjoy it. You know, fun comes and goes, you know, just like motivation comes and goes. You have to be driven. So I've uh, just been enjoying the journey, the ups and downs. You know, it's, it's, you know, through the dark times, you have to have the light, you know, and the light is, you know, I know that I can turn this around with one fight, you know, momentum, and that's what, you know, the the week, the word of the week is uh, momentum. Just have the momentum from the beginning of this week, you know, good weight cut and just, you know, step inside the octagon and just perform. So is flyweight done for you then, even though you said it wasn't that difficult of a weight cut? The weight cut was amazing. Dr. Capo is one of the best in the world. I mean, I never made 125 since I was 15 years old. And so uh, we worked super hard at it, you know. Um, I felt like I let him down in the performance, you know what I mean? But my mind wasn't there. I was. Honestly, I was walking to the octagon just <laughs> numb, not like, fuck, I got to go fight now. Like, man, not because the weight cut. Not, the weight cut felt good. I could do the weight cut 10 times over. Uh, I felt good at 25. And I just tell, tell you, my life was not where it needed to be at, you know? You know what I mean? So, uh, you know, I was in limbo stage with a lot of it, you know, and moving out here and, uh, you know, just changing, changing things that I needed to change, you know? Um, you know, we have a career, you know? end up getting divorced, you know, before my fight, selling the house the week of my fight. I have a son that's, um, you know, was three years old, four years old at the time. You know, I come from a split family, I didn't want that, but you know, we had to put our career on, you know, 
for life. You know, I had to do I had to do some life changes. You know, thankfully me and my ex-wife were, you know, great co-parents, doing amazing. You know, Kai is just so blessed. He turns five next week. I'm so thankful for him and and what he's brought into my life. And you know, sometimes you just go separate ways. But I had a lot going on in my personal life. I think a lot of people don't understand or you know, that we're still humans at the end of the day. We still battle with things that regular humans do. We just have skills that put us at, a, I guess, some people put us on a pedestal, but at the same day, we tie our shoes the same way and deal with the same personal stress and things that go on in life. Uh, it was finally to be able to handle that and move forward. And, you know, she's happy and I'm happy and our kids flourishing. And, you know, I feel like, you know, my life is, you know, set on what I needed to do, and that's focus on my career, focus on being a father and being present for my son and providing for him. And last one for me, I'd be remiss I have to ask, what do you make of uh, TJ Dillashaw retiring after his last fight? Oh, I think he did the Conor McGregor uh, USADA retirement, you know what I mean? But, yeah, I mean, I get this question a lot about TJ, this and that, but, I mean, it is what it is. I think karma gets us all, you know what I mean? If you're a bad person, karma's going to find you. And that's all I really have to say about that. Um, I look like you look like shit his last fight, you know, tr truthfully. But when you abuse your body like that and take all those stuff and you get off of it, you know, there's consequences. And you, I think you saw that. So, uh, yeah, hopefully, you know, whatever he does, if he stays stay retired, hope he's, he's found peace and happiness and good for him, you know. I'm excited for what I do on Saturday night, you know, uh, the comeback. Cody over here. Uh, speaking of retirements, Jose Aldo also retired. Uh, any, you know, disappointment that you, you're never going to get to fight him? You know, that was always a fight. You know, Ho Jose is just a, a great competitor. Love, I mean, just amazing fighter. That would have been great. You know, he's, he's a phenomenal fighter. But he's, he's doing well in boxing. He's getting ready to fight Jeremy Stevens in May. Um, so that's, 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 that's exciting, you know. If, he might fight Mayweather. Mayweather. Okay, cool. Awesome. That's great. You know, I think that's a, that's a good fight for Mayweather. Jose Aldo has great boxing. You know, he's, <laughs> he's phenomenal. So, um, yeah, I... You know, you come to a point in your time that this, this MMA is, is, is rough on your body, you know. So for them just to focus on one martial arts and boxing, it's not saying it's a lot easier, but it's not a lot as demanding on your body. You have to wrestle, you have to jiu-jitsu, you have to kickbox, you have to spar. You know, boxing, you run, you spar, you hit pads, you know. I'm not saying it's not hard, it is. It's a martial arts, but uh, martial arts is the hardest sport to do and, and stay healthy. Um, obviously, the focus is on Saturday, but past Saturday, is there any interest in, in rematching Dominic Cruz at some point? I like Dominic. You know, I like Dominic. But, um, yeah, I mean, th this fight on Saturday, obviously, is my, my focus. You know, I, I fought Dom at, at, at his, you know, peak, and we had, you know, I was a young, I was 25 years old. You know what I mean? I was 25 years old and had a great performance against him. And, you know, we'll see what the matchmakers want to do. Um, I have personally no, no, no beef against Dom. Um, but yeah, Saturday is my focus on uh, the guy that I'm fighting. We'll kind of just go from there. And last one for me, uh, you mentioned Team Alpha Male. How cool was it seeing Mike Malott get another win last week? He's, he's been killing it in the welterweight division. You know, I'm super happy for Mike. Um, Baxter on Mike, we both came out to Alpha Male at the same time and uh, he was fighting 145. I remember sparring this dude. I'm like, ah, this guy's massive. He's strong, he's big, he's, he's skilled. And we got his name because he was proper the way he spoke, and um, you know, coming from Canada, so we gave him proper, proper Mike Malott. Uh, just a great guy. I mean, honestly, such a such a good human. I'm so happy for success, and I just knew that you know he took some time off. You know, he took like four years off. He actually helped me out. He cornered me. He coached me uh, for a few of my UFC fights, and uh, you know, actually, it was one of the fights. I think the Kai fight, maybe before, that he decided that he was coming back to fighting. I was like, hey, man, I can't take, you know, that from you. This is your years. Go get it, you know. So, you know, I found a new coach. But, uh, you know, I'm thankful for the time that he gave me, you know, the skills. And we had, a, we had a great time. You know, we had a good fight with Rafael Sunsau. He, was, he trained me basically the whole time for that. But like I said, I'm just super excited for him. He had a great performance. I just spoke to him uh, last week. I mean, that was a flawless performance. And he, that kid is good everywhere. He can wrestle. He can grapple. He can strike. And he's, he's just, I think that he's going to be a, a very dangerous person in that waterway division. Hey, Cody. Um, I just wanted to know what went into the mindset of moving to Vegas. Uh, you know, you've cross-trained at a bunch of really big gyms, really popular gyms. Um, 
what went into the decision to, to, to move to Vegas and kind of go with Dewey and go with Extreme Couture? What was the mindset? Why did I leave Sacramento? Yeah, just like, why, why choose Vegas? Well, so my ex-wife is from Vegas, so we agreed to move here, split custody of our son. You know, there's nothing for in Sacramento. Our family, friends are here, and, you know, I can't be selfish to the keeper there, and I <laughs> damn sure couldn't be far from my son. So, you know, it made it work, you know, but I, it was tough. It was a tough transition for me, but uh, I'm grateful for Dewey Cooper, Chase Pammy, I mean, Eric, Giff, all these guys helped me out in the beginning to help out. Uh, but I'm, I'm a creature of habit, you know, I, I, I do really well in structure and routine. So, like I said, there's a reason why probably 16 months was, uh, was out and those fights didn't happen. But I truly believe I have the best camp that I had in my entire career. I truly believe I'm the most well-rounded martial artist that will grace this octagon on Saturday. And you talked about, you know, like, you know, fires being human. How do you drown out all of the the doubt and the fans not the fans and analysts saying that like you're done you don't have a chin anymore like you know like how how do you drown that out yeah for me i honestly it's 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 always been like that i've had doubt my whole entire life you know what i mean since i was born i was born into nothing you know dirt my mom was a single parent you know raised us so we weren't supposed to make it this far so i just keep proving everyone wrong and just you know staying humble doing what i need to do is just go in there and train every day and get better and understand that, you know, <laughs> that it happens. It's a fight, you know, there's a game of inches. You know, sometimes you might get caught and, and luckily I had, you know, I was 11 and 0 world champion, 25 years old. I, you know, I truly believe that I still have a lot of fight left in me. You know, as long as the passion and the hunger is there, um, I don't, you know, I don't see any sky is the limit. Thanks, man. Over here, over here Cody. Um, you made a comment, obviously you've been in Vegas for a year now, hopefully you know that's going better for you. I'm kind of curious if you have any favorite spots in town to eat, gamble, anything like that. Yeah, actually I, um, I don't gamble, um, never was lucky with that, even playing like Texas Hold'em when I was younger, I always turned in like fist fights with the friends. Um, so yeah, I don't gamble, thank God. Um, I got a few good spots, um, there's a nice uh, coffee shop, mom and pop shop, uh, lovely couple owns it, it's on Seven Hills, it's called True Brew. It's an organic coffee place. They make like homemade uh, pastries. I haven't been there in a while. Sorry, guys. I was a regular, but uh, you know, obviously, got to sacrifice a little bit. I like the Yellowtail at um, Bellagio. That's a good sushi spot. And then uh, Carver at the Resort World. I am uh, pretty. I go there a lot. I take my mom and family and, and friends when they come out when I can eat. So. There's, that's, there's a plus to, to Vegas for sure. There's a lot of good food restaurants. You know, I wasn't a big fan of the, the Vegas uh, move, but you know, I don't drink. I've been sober for almost a year now, uh, so it's it's. I don't go out clubbing, do nothing like that. So I just you know I you know I think you can get into those you know bad habits moving out here. But luckily, I didn't have any bad habits when I moved here, so I don't start any now. Awesome. And you made the comment earlier, your debut was on a John Jones yeah. card, and here you are, you know, fighting again on, uh, on a John Jones card. Kind of curious, just your opinion on the, on the jones uh, Cyril Gon fight. Yeah, you know, I'm super excited for this fight. I think John Jones is one of the greatest martial arts of all time. Um, just no matter the layoff he has, no matter what he's going through in life, he just, he always finds a way to, you know, be John Jones. And uh, Cyril Gon is a phenomenal fighter. I really liked his... Um, his style and the way he fights. I'm excited for this, you know. I think that even with the layoff, I think John Jones wins this fight pretty handily. I think that John Jones is a different breed and he shows up when he needs to and uh, I'm excited for him to put another notch in his belt and go up and get a heavyweight title and really solidify himself as the best martial artist of all time. One quick one for me, Cody, and I'll piggyback off of Alex. Team Alpha Male, family, of course. And for your career, maybe things happen for a reason. One of the greatest minds with Dewey Cooper, knowing the fight game training, how easy was it to click with Dewey and how, how seamless was that transition? Yeah, that's a, that's a good uh, statement. Easy transition. You know, a lot of the f coaches that you train with or striking coach, I should say, try to reinvent the wheel. You know, I'm a Ferrari. I don't need to put new wheels or anything in it. I just need to be polished up. And uh, that's what Dewey did. Polished me up and turned me into a, you know, a striking machine. I feel like all my tools, all my limbs are deadly, you know, and, and the mindset that he brings into it because Dewey was a fighter himself, a world champion, 
kickboxer. He boxed. He did MMA. So he's been, you know, he has his battle scars of it. You know, he's he's been in the trenches and uh, the mentality and just the um, encouraging words he brings inside camp. You know, some days you're not the best days. You know, some days you don't feel good, but it's no matter how you feel, it's what you do. I think that's one of the best saying that I've taken from Dewey. It's not a, it's not a matter how you feel, it's what you do. You know, there's some days you wake up on fight day and you feel like shit, but you still got to go fight. Thank you, sir. Good luck on Saturday. Thank you. Okay. One quick thing, I want to give a shout out to uh, my claim at my high school. Uh, the kids wrestle tomorrow at districts, so I just want to give a big shout out to Ryan Jackson, 120, Elijah Paris, Nolan McMorrow, Thane Mahaffey, Kendrick Rineker, Wyatt Shaw are all going to compete tomorrow at districts in Ohio, and alternates are Tritton Cole, Nate Burton, and Kictris Anthony. Go get them, guys.